What's up, my triple love on YouTube friends? Just sitting here, cracking some gash, and sitting back and relaxing. Thinking about my next move. Look at this bench full of beauties. Oh my goodness, does this look absolutely gorgeous or what? I've spent the last two nights cleaning up parts for Project Cheapo, and oh my heavens, looking at this bench, gets the Levi's fitting kind of tight if you know what I'm trying to say. Oh my man, oh man, oh man, is everything looking gorgeous on here. I even went to O'Reilly's and bought all new hardware and stuff for the top end. Oh, everything's gonna be just absolutely gorgeous and beautiful on the top, cleaned everything up. I did a little port work on the cylinders. And I wanna show you the difference between a standard Ultra SP cylinder. I gotta get the camera closer. So let's look at the difference here. Quick identification, other than the cylinder numbers, is really simple here, just to see from the outside without even looking at the numbers. So there's, here's an SPX cylinder. See the ports right here? See how close they are together? Those are your intake ports right there. Even though the cylinder will say 03, indicating the SPX, here's an SP cylinder. See the gap between the ports? Yep, the intake ports aren't nearly as big as the SPX cylinders. And then let's say six, 68 PL on them with no dash, with no O3 on the end of it. So that's an SP cylinder. Ports are a lot smaller. SPX cylinder, intake ports are a lot bigger. These things move some air and fuel. Let me tell you folks, did a little bit of cleanup on the exhaust port in here. Opened up these guys in here, polished them all out. Oh my heavens. Oh my goodness, something is gonna flow. Got the Weisco pistons, got the 12 to one SLP head sitting here. Got all the covers cleaned up. Got everything just looking beautiful now. Got the water pump. I'll be having Tim, precision pumps, take care of this. He took it all apart for me so I could actually polish it all up and make it look absolutely gorgeous. Oh, that thing's gonna look amazing. Absolutely amazing. So what I gotta do next here is I just, laid out my four oil line oil pumps sitting here, gathering up my drill bits and my fittings and stuff so that I can do my fourth oil line modification right here. I'm gonna do that to this engine. Um, didn't do it on the last couple engines because I just didn't have the parts to be able to do it. So um, I just built the last couple engines just basically stock engines. So, but this SPX here, um, I'm going to push it a little, kind of a little bit hard, you know, so um, with the porting and the heads and whatnot, like I said, this engine is going to be pushed a little bit harder, so I'm going to do that fourth oil line on there. A um, couple other things we got going on. Everything's cleaned up, though. Everything's ready to go. This engine's getting built in the morning. Um, yeah, that tomorrow, that engine will be all done. Trenton's been working on his hood here, and we've been actually working on the chassis over here. Got it all cleaned up. Pulled the front heat exchanger out of it. I put some pretty lengthy studs in the track, so um, my behind the scenes tech advisor, I'm gonna give Jason Marta here a big shout out. Jason Marta, uh, I, I do a lot of communication, communicating with Jason Marta back and forth on Messenger. And uh, he's, he's been a world help for me. He's kind of my, I told him, I, you're my behind the scenes tech advisor. And he advised, take the front heat exchanger out of this aggressive chassis, just like the wedge chassis, didn't run one. So take it out, that way you'll have no worries. Because so I was a little concerned that the studs might tickle, tickle onto that front ex heat exchanger. And I decided, uh, I don't want to ever have to keep that in my mind that it could possibly happen. So we pulled that out. I'm going to change the line and stuff. So it just bypasses that and goes right over to the other cooler and stuff. Simple modification. I'll probably show that in a video later this weekend when we get to that point. But um, Trenton's been working on getting all the foil tape redone underneath the hood. This thing is absolutely going to be a thing of beauty when it's done. And that's what we're looking for because all it's so clean. It was such a clean chassis. And uh, so we peeled all the tape out. And Trenton put all new tape in. Oh, my God. I got the pipes. I brought the pipes into the sandblaster. Um, I'm only getting them sandblasted. And I'm going to rattle can paint them. I'm trying to keep this thing cheap. Project Cheapo. So pulled the shocks out last night. Brought them in to get rebuilt. Um, front shocks and a set of skid shocks. I actually got a nice set of uh, FXR um, 
shocks I had on the shelf that had reservoirs and stuff. So I actually brought them in, and I'll just pull the shocks that are in that skid out, put them on the shelf. But putting them in a little bit better uh, shocks in that skid. I'm gonna try and make this thing ride nice. So got, we pulled a seat out of the storage area. Got to pull all that cover off. Scotty Sledge said will be building a seat cover as soon as they get back from vacation. They're not going to be back till the end of May. Um, but, oh my God, I got to show you something here. You're going to be amazed. Absolutely amazed at this. Hopefully it, the other side doesn't show as I walk over here. But look at, would you look at this? Just look at this. Look at that filth. Look at the grime. Look at the, most people would take this dash and just toss it in the weeds. Say, I can't deal with this. Look at how filthy that thing is. Now, let me show you what the other side looks like. Yep. Oh. Well, that'll happen. Four aught steel wool. Let me get that back up onto the seat again. Oh, it's hard to run a camera and judge distance of your hand at the same time. Let me tell you. So there's the side I cleaned up. Here's the side. This dash came off a part sled that Trent and I bought. The reason we want to run this dash it's got the reverse instructions on it. Yep, we are putting reverse in cheapo. I bought a uh, reverse chain case set last year sometime. It came up on Marketplace. I was searching other states one day. Bad, bad. Don't search other states on Marketplace because you're gonna find all kinds of things to buy then. I found a reverse chain case set and uh, I bought it. Boom. I had, a, I had, it was such a freaking screaming deal on it. And it was like summertime, you know, it was last year. Prices go down in the summer. So I bought this reverse chain case and I had I didn't have a sled to put it in at the time or I didn't have one in mind. But when we started building cheap one, I'm like, we're putting that reverse chain case in. So this part sled that Trent and I bought for a motor and a bunch of other, uh, the hood that went on freebie and Trent and pulled the motor and put it in another sled and we did all kinds of stuff. It had this dash on there with the reverse instructions. But this thing looked, the whole thing looked like this. And I'm like, you know what the hell? I'm gonna take some simple green some steel wool and lightly clean and look at this thing it looks it looks brand new i mean most people would have taken just toss that thing oh i can't do anything about it four aught steel wool took all this all this right here all that grime look at all this lightly i don't want to bore you forever here but look at the lettering's already coming out just lightly lightly with the four aught and it cleans all that moss and blackness and all that crap. Well, anyways, enough on that. that that's how you make an old shitty looking dash look new again. And that, that was just amazing when I got that thing cleaned up. But I've done that a lot on other parts too. Belly pans and gas tanks on the old TXs and stuff. When Trent and I were restoring TXs, we'd take a gas tank that was so out of color, we'd soak it down with ATF and stuff and get the oil back into the plastic and then the color would pop again. Everything we're getting color on. Screens. Trent's painting a bunch of screens over here. Screens for uh, the hood for Hooker and the screens for Cheapo. What? We're going to go white on them. Make them screens pop on that hood. Figured it looked really nice like that. So that's all I got for now, guys. Tomorrow morning I'm putting that engine together. More than likely not going to video it. I just did a complete engine build. Step-by-step uh, -step series. So probably not going to do another one. But I'll do another update video probably tomorrow or maybe even on... Uh, Sunday, because I think things are gonna start amazingly happen around here. Oh, the track. Let's show, just gotta show you the guys the track. Putting a 144 and an inch and a quarter lug. It's all studded up, 96 pattern. Basically it ended up being 114 studs in this track. So that's what's going to be in it. Put the 144 in it. Um, we're gonna put all new bearings everywhere. Um, treat, her, treat her good. Treat this old girl good, so. But that's it. Look at, look at the chain case cover. A little bit of cleaning work on the chain case cover and on the chain case and stuff. So, all right, guys, that's it for now. Um, it's going to be an exciting weekend. This is going to be probably Trenton and I's last weekend working on sleds for a weekend. Um, the, from here on out, we're in a, it's, it's major projects at our cabin, adding on to our barn, concreting the floor. Um, yeah, we're, we're doing a lot, a lot of work up there this summer. So, we're gonna keep doing these during the week, but we stayed home this weekend because it's gonna be crappy up north again and uh, get one more good solid weekend. When me and Trenton can go nonstop from Friday, Saturday, to Sunday, a lot happens. And uh, so that's what we say, we're, okay, we're staying home. One more solid weekend, we'll get cheapo, mostly blasted out, couple day build, 
and then we could slowly pick away and then waiting for some parts like i said the seat cover uh, a few other parts i'm gonna have to wait for too so uh, things are gonna happen pretty fast and let's walk out and take a look at the fun mobile though i actually drove this thing i've driven it um it's wild i gotta tell you it is uh it's it's geared way different now it's real torquey it uh yeah it, it's gonna get a little different it's it's gonna get some used to uh driving it like that with these tracks because uh you push the go pedal and it it takes off very easily and uh there goes the shop cat caddy but yeah that's uh that's gonna take a little used to getting to drive that thing but i took i took it for a rip around the neighborhood uh last friday night i took it and it's it was pretty fun it's uh kind of loud and it's rattly i mean it's going down the road and stuff but uh it was pretty fun so thanks guys thanks for watching